Hey guys, welcome to Learn Today IGCSC. This is another video on space physics practice questions from Cambridge Assessment International Education. This practice question consists of four questions each from paper one and paper two, and three questions each for paper three and four. All right, let's get started. Paper one. Question one. The diagrams represent the positions of the Earth, the Sun, and the Moon at different times of the Moon's cycle. Which diagram represents the position of the Moon when a full Moon is seen from the Earth? For the first option, the light from the Sun directly hits this surface of the Moon, so a full Moon can be seen from the Earth. And as for the second option, the ray of light would only hit this surface, and from the Earth we will be able to see a half Moon. And for option C, the ray of light would hit half of the moon. And from this side of the earth, we will be only able to see a new moon. And for the last option, it will be the same as option B, where you will be able to see only half of the moon. So the answer here is A. Question 2. Which row correctly describes the nature of Mars and the nature of Saturn? The first four planets in the solar system are rocky, and the other four planets in our solar system is larger and gaseous. Mars is found in the first four planets, so it is rocky. The last four, which is gaseous. So the answer here is C. Question 3. Which type of force keeps the planets in orbit around the Sun? The Sun has a huge mass, and it has a large gravity to keep all the planets orbiting around the Sun. This force is known as a gravitational force. So the answer is C. Question 4. Which distance is the largest? The diameter of Neptune's orbit, the diameter of the Sun, the distance between the Earth and the Sun, or the distance between the Sun and the next nearest star which is Proxima Centauri. So the answer here is D because the next nearest star is a few light years away from our solar system. Next, moving on to paper 2 example questions. Question 1. Which statement is correct? A light year is the time it takes for light from the sun to reach the earth. This is wrong because a light year is a measurement of distance and not time. The planets move around the sun in circular orbits. This is also wrong because the orbit is not exactly circle but it is more elliptical. The sun consists mostly of helium. This is also wrong because the sun consists mostly of helium and hydrogen. And lastly, the sun contains most of the mass of the solar system. This is correct. So the answer here is D. Question 2. The sun emits electromagnetic radiation. The graph shows the energy emitted per second for a range of different wavelengths. In chapter 3, you will come across the electromagnetic spectrum where you will learn different radiation type from the lowest frequency towards its highest frequency. The spectrum also tells us that the energy emitted from this end to this end increases, meaning that gamma ray has the highest energy emitted per second and radio wave has the lowest. So from this graph here, we can see that at X, it has the highest energy emitted per second so between infrared, ultraviolet and visible light, ultraviolet has the highest energy emitted. So the answer for region X should be ultraviolet. And then it reduces here at Y, meaning that it should be followed by visible light. And lastly, it reduces, so this should be infrared. So the answer here is C. Question 3. A distant star explodes as a supernova. Which statement is not correct? The exploding supernova forms a planetary nebula. That is incorrect because a red giant is what forms a planetary nebula. So we know that the answer here is A. Question 4. Distant galaxies are moving away from the Earth at very high speeds. Graph P and graph Q show how the speed of this distant galaxy changes as their distance from the Earth increases. In which row are the statements about the Hubble constant and about the age of the universe is correct? So we have here two graphs, speed and distance, and the other one is reversed distance versus speed. A speed and distance graph will give us Hubble constant, and if reversed, we can get the age of the universe. So speed versus distance tells us the Hubble constant as the gradient, whereas when it is being reversed, 1 over h naught, this gives us the age of the universe. So the answer here is B. Paper 3 example questions. Question 1. 
state the name of the force that keeps the Earth in orbit around the Sun. So we just did this question in our MCQ part earlier and the forces that keep every planet orbiting around the Sun would be the gravitational force or attraction. Part B, state how many days it takes the Earth to complete one orbit of the Sun. The time for one orbit of the Sun is approximately 365 days. Part C, explain why the Sun appears to move across the sky each day. Question 2, Part A. Complete the sentences about objects in our solar system. Planets, minor planets, and asteroids orbit the sun. The objects that orbit planets are called moon, which is our natural satellite. Part B. Compare the structure and the size of the four inner planets with those of the four outer planets of our solar system. The first four planets are rocky and small, and the last four planets are gases and large. Question 3. State the names of the two main elements found in the Sun. The two main elements found are hydrogen and helium. In the Sun, nuclear fusion takes place whereby hydrogen atoms would fuse together to form a helium atom. Part B. The Sun is one of many billions of stars that make up our galaxy. Complete the following sentence about our galaxy. Our galaxy is named the Milky Way. Question C. The distance of Mars from the Sun is 2.4 times 10 to the power of 11 meters. The speed of light is 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. Calculate the time for light from the Sun to reach Mars. So you are looking to find time and you have the distance and the speed. From the formula speed equals to distance over time, we can calculate the time taken for light to reach Mars. If we rearrange the formula, we would get time equals the distance, which is 2.4 times 10 to the power of 11 meters, over the speed of light 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. Make sure that you are always using the right units. This is in meters per second, so it's okay to leave your distance in meters as well. So the time obtained here would be 800 seconds. Paper 4 Example Questions Question 1 Figure 1.1 shows the orbit of a comet around the Sun. X, Y, P, and Q are different positions on this orbit. Question A, Part 1. State how the speed of the comet changes as it moves from X to Y. So this is the position of X and this is the position of Y. X is positioned further from the Sun compared to Y. This means that X has a greater gravitational potential energy and a lower kinetic energy. And as it moves towards Y, getting closer to the Sun, the gravitational potential energy would decrease and its kinetic energy would increase. So this means that the speed of X to Y would increase because its kinetic energy is now increasing. I have explained further about the principle of conservation of energy in Chapter 6 Space Physics video. To understand this question better, please watch that video. Next, Part 2. Explain in terms of energy transfer your answer to A part 1. So as the comet moves closer to the sun, the gravitational potential energy decreases and its kinetic energy increases. Question B. The shape of the orbit of the comet from P to Q is circular with the sun at its center. State and explain the changes, if any, in the speed and in the velocity of the comet as it moves from P to Q. So this is P and Q. So they want to know if there is any changes in its speed and velocity from P to Q. Since the shape is circular, there will be no change in gravitational potential energy or kinetic energy. This means that the speed will always remain constant. However, velocity is a vector quantity, meaning that it has both magnitude and direction. Since the direction of the comet is constantly changing, we also need to mention that the velocity of this comet is changing. This is a common question that they will ask you in Chapter 1 regarding scalar quantity and a vector quantity. So, since speed is a scalar quantity, we would say that it remains constant. Even though the magnitude of the velocity remains constant here as the speed, 
but vector quantity has direction. And since the direction is changing, we also have to mention that our velocity is constantly changing. Question 2, Part A. Explain why the moon is visible from the earth. The moon is visible from the earth because the light from the sun is reflected from the moon's surface. Question B. Figure 2.1 shows some of the phases of the moon as seen from the earth. Part 1. In figure 2.1, draw the phases of the moon for day 7 and day 29. After new moon, we would see the first half of the moon. So we are going to shade opposite of day 22 like this. And then you've got full moon which everything is able to be seen. And finally, after 29 days, we will observe a new moon all over again. So we can shade everything here. Part 2. State what the phases of the moon indicate about the motion of the moon. This indicates that the moon is orbiting around the earth and it takes approximately 29 days to complete a full orbit. Question C. The average radius of the moon's orbit is 3.84 times 10 to the power of 5 kilometers. The moon's average orbital speed is 1,025 meters per second. Calculate the time period for the moon to complete one orbit of the earth. So we have the radius here, which is 3.84 times 10 to the power of 5 kilometers. And it says here that its orbital speed, the speed it moves around the earth, is 1025 meters per second. And we are asked to calculate how long it will take to complete one orbit around the earth. The formula for orbital speed is 2 pi r over t. And since we are looking to find t, we can rearrange this to 2 pi r over v. So the radius here is given in kilometers, but the velocity is given in meters per second. So we shall convert the distance into meters by multiplying 10 to the power of 3. So we would have 2 times pi times 3.84 times 10 to the power of 8 meters over 1025 meters per second. And you will get a value of t which is 2.35 times 10 to the power of 6 seconds. Do not forget your units. Always pay attention to your units. Make sure you do the unit conversion correctly by looking at all the information given in your question. Question 3, Part A. Light from glowing hydrogen in distant galaxies is redshifted. Redshift is one of the evidence for the universe expanding and the second evidence is the CMBR, which is the Cosmic Microwave Background Radiation. Part 1. Describe what is meant by the redshift of light. Redshift is the increase in the observed wavelength of electromagnetic radiation emitted from receding stars and galaxies. Part 2. State what can be deduced from the redshift of light from glowing hydrogen in a distant galaxy. This tells us that the distant galaxy is moving away from the Earth and its velocity can be calculated by comparing its wavelength. Question B, Part 1. State one method for estimating the distance d of a distant galaxy from the Earth. For measuring far away galaxies' distance, it can be determined by using the brightness of a supernova in that galaxy. Part 2. Explain how, according to the Big Bang Theory, 1 over h0, h0 being the Hubble constant, represents the age of the universe. h0 is Hubble's law and it states that the further away a star is from Earth, the faster it is moving away from us. According to Big Bang Theory, all galaxies or matter originated from one point and time in space. So, if the distance a galaxy has traveled is d and the speed it has been moving is v, the time it has been moving is d over v. And the equation of d over v is 1 over h0. And this here gives us the time from when the universe has begun, which is approximately 13 to 14 billion years ago. So for the first point, you can mention that according to the Big Bang Theory, all galaxies or matter originated from one point and time in space. And secondly, you can say that 
If the distance travel is d and velocity of recession is v, then the time can be calculated by d over v, whereby the distance traveled over the velocity. So this equation here d over v is actually 1 over Hubble constant. And this equation here is the time from when the universe began. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching till the end. I hope it was worth your time. If you have any questions, please ask me in the comment section below and please subscribe to my channel if you like to see more videos like this. Thank you. Bye.